evening I'd like to uh, take a look at what has to be one of the most important historical events for the nation of Israel. You know, for Christians, we would certainly point to the historical event of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ as absolutely fundamental concerning what our faith is based upon. If you could somehow prove that either the crucifixion or the resurrection, that it never really took place, that there was no evidence for it, it would certainly add a significant amount of doubt into uh, our faith and certainly make it difficult for us to substantiate the claims that we make concerning the salvation that we believe is centrally located upon the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, Paul tells the Corinthian church that if it wasn't for the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we above all people would be most miserable. Why? Because there would be no evidence for the very central feature upon which we lay our hope. And for the nation of Israel, the establishment of the nation of Israel begins with their exodus from Egypt. Prior to that, they are the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They go in as a family and come out as a nation. And as we look into the world today, of course, the media is shaping the understanding of the world with a perspective of the nation of Israel as being illegal occupiers of the land of Palestine. And much of that, of course, has all kinds of political and, and religious undertones, but one of the things that is certainly difficult for establishing the right of Israel to be in the land, of course, is the very birth of the nation itself and its arrival ultimately under Joshua as he begins to occupy the promised land. If you could somehow disprove or cast serious question and doubt upon that situation and circumstance in terms of history, of course, you would be able to cause doubt on the legitimacy of the entire nation of Israel. In the same way in which if you could cast doubt on the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Paul was the one who said it, you would then really cast doubt on the veracity of Christianity in and of itself. And so in this study, we're going to be looking at the question of the evidence for the Exodus. Now, all of us are very familiar with the biblical account that the Bible gives us in the book of Exodus concerning this event. And there have been blockbuster movies made dramatizing this event. But is there any real evidence for it? Today, if you travel to the Sinai Peninsula, uh, especially on one of the Holy Land tours, they will take you down to a mountain referred to as Jabal Musa, or Mount Sinai, the Mount of Moses. And there at the foot of the mountain is a monastery, St. Catherine's Monastery, which was established in the fourth century A.D. And the tradition of Mount Sinai in the Sinai Peninsula really was something that was not established by the Jews, but by the Christians. And it was established in the fourth century through a very mystical type of a process. Now, if we look at this issue of where the children of Israel, if they indeed came out of Egypt, the key element, which is a repeated theme throughout Scripture, is the escape of Israel not only from Egypt, but the crossing of the Red Sea. It's equated in the Psalms as the symbol of God's salvation for the nation. In the New Testament, it is a type and shadow of you and I going through the waters of baptism. 
And so if it's an event associated around a, a, uh, uh, a historical event which cannot be proven, then it, it not only calls into question the veracity and the legitimacy of the nation of Israel, but one would have to question the legitimacy of Christianity itself, since it also bases so much in terms of types and shadows uh, of really uh, what we are as Christians equated to like the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, crossing the Red Sea. Now, as we take a look at the place of the crossing, we find that they came out of Egypt and they turned in the wilderness and they camped before the mouth of the channel between mountains and the sea opposite Baal Ziphon, which means the God of the unknown. After the crossing, they went three days' journey to the bitter springs of Mara. From there, they traveled on to Elam, where they found 12 wells and 70 palm trees, and they camped by the Red Sea. Then they turned inland and traveled through the, uh, the wilderness of Sin, which is Hebrew for the word for thorns, and they came to Rephidim, a place where God will provide water from a rock. They then arrive at their camp at the foot of Mount Sinai. At the foot of Mount Sinai, there is the altar of Moses. There is the golden calf altar that was erected by the children of Israel, supervised by the brother of Moses. There would be a mountain that would have some evidence associated with it that the presence of God was there. These would be the evidences that we would look for. A place where when they crossed, they would cross at a place where they turned in the wilderness and found themselves trapped. After they crossed three days journey, they would find bitter springs and then they would go and camp for a while by the Red Sea and then ultimately turn into the wilderness where God would then feed them with manna for their 40-year uh, time in this wilderness area. Now, that being the criteria that one would look for, let's look at what the secular media has to say with regards to this. In the March 9th, 2002 issue of the New York Times, Dr. Zawi Howis, the Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities and Director of the Giza Pyramid Excavation, says this, archaeologists who have worked here have never turned up evidence to support the account in the Bible. So as the Sinai Peninsula now is residing under the control of Egypt, of course, the uh, Secretary General of the Supreme Council of Antiquities for the nation of Egypt has made this broad brush statement concerning uh, the claim of the Bible related to Israel saying there's absolutely no evidence for the Exodus as it is described in the Bible. Now I will caveat that by simply saying the Bible that most people have on their laps tonight. For as you turn to the back of most Bibles, of course, there will be a map there which will make some type of delineation as to the travels of the children of Israel in this Sinai area. After the Six-Day War, the nation of Israel actually had the Sinai Peninsula, and during the time between its capture and delivering it back to Egypt after the Camp David Accord, during that time, Israel sent significant amounts of, of energy and money and individuals into the Sinai Peninsula, archaeologists, to try to see if they could discover anything that would corroborate the, uh, the perceived uh, 